as exactly. a defendant. You know, if you're rich, well, you may have a better chance with a better legal team. Oh, Absolutely. if you're rich, you're getting off no matter what. That's a proven fact. <laughs> well, yeah. that's the richer you are, the easier it is to get off. The easier it is. But in this day and age with videos and all that, it's getting harder for them to get off. But like Joyce said, the better your legal team, the better chance you have of getting off. But uh, the at the same time, you also got to look at there's a lot of cases that you're proven guilty and have to prove your innocence. And that's not how the law is supposed to work. You're innocent until proven guilty. Right. You're subject to to um, to public scrutiny. And, and that's and where the facts come into play as to determine whether you're guilty or not. But a lot of cases you're found guilty before so you're arrested and then, then you got to prove your innocence. And that's not how the law was designed. Right. There's Absolutely. justice is supposed to be blind and it's supposed to go strictly off facts. It don't do that no more. Well, it's hard in this day and age when court cases are live broadcast for everybody to see. There's um, nothing wrong with broadcast on live are, court cases. Things are well, maybe not the court cases. I'm sorry, but um, you know, uh, things are put on the news very quickly. Um, TikTok is news now, so uh, yeah, things are put any on the news platform really is quickly. Yeah. Any yeah. platform nowadays is news, right? Um, and but back unfortunately, back the- you don't on, on every social media platform there is, be it YouTube. Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Discord, whatever the platform is, information is thrown out there real fast without looking at the facts. And right. everybody makes their opinions off of what put out there, and they don't see the facts. And then they make their judgment call, and they stick to their judgment call off of what they saw without looking at the facts. Right, but also the public defender's office is a travesty. They get paid fifty thousand dollars a year. Their caseloads are absolutely insane. They have one hundred twenty-five cases a month sometimes for one person. Um, it, it just doesn't add up. So that's uh, that's the other problem. Well, that and the fact that the, the lawyers have been personified to the point of no end, and these guys want to make money. And they really don't really want to give 100% on a case that they're not going to make money on. So they have asked to do the case. Just enough to say they represented somebody. And that's wrong. I didn't get You've seen it. I've seen it. It's been on TV. And you can tell the lawyers just going through the motions to be there. And that's it. Well, usually yes, I agree. Public, usually those the are lawyers opinions. are overwhelmed with cases, and it shouldn't be that way. Right. So they're only going to take the cases that will make them money. And so the people who can't afford it get the public defenders. And, yep. you know, it's absolutely think about it. A criminal, a criminal law, uh, criminal law attorney. Uh, usually their retainer is at least five thousand dollars just to speak with them and for yep, them to 30 minutes. Take your case. Right. For them to take your case, five thousand dollars out the door, right then and there. And then they charge um, so, you a hundred dollars an hour. Absolutely. So that's that's why most people end up with a public defender. And but it shouldn't be that way. I, I'm sorry. I don't believe I should pay for an attorney's green fees. That's yeah. like all these professional sports players crying about their paychecks, and like I told a bunch of them. When you can step into a fair combat boots, put on a uniform, stand on the front line, and get paid what you're making right now, talk to me about it. If not, don't bitch about what you're making. You make more than service members do, and that's ridiculous. Well, you're not putting your life on the line every day. You play sports for nine months out of the year, and you're making $5 million. But well, there's somebody standing on that front line 365 days a year, Barely well, squeaking you know, by. Definitely. I would have, I would have gone yeah. with Blackwater for my, for my overseas uh, video game fund. They pay better, I think. <laughs> it's called capitalism, so you can blame the Constitution. Um, as far as how much money they make, but back to your military point, you know, like I said, I was raised military. I was married to someone in the military for a long time. Um, most of them are not fighting on the front line, so I'm just going to put that out there, just for anybody that's not a. Um, that's not aware of how the military works. A uh, vast majority of people that are in the military are there because they have to be, not because they want to be. They don't have to be. Um, 
Mm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to take any offense to this, Jeff, because I'm not, I don't know you. So I'm not, I'm not stating you per se. And this might've been um, back when you were in, it may have been a little bit more patriotic, but from my experience, um, and I was an ombudsman for a long time, uh, from what I've seen, a good majority of people who are in the military are there because they have to be, because they cannot function in regular society. They cannot obtain the job that they want without it, or they can't afford the school. So to sit here and say that, okay, with and, that. and also military gets paid very well. I don't want anyone to <laughs> they do. Absolutely. 100%. We were very figure? well taken care of. Um, we had a base housing allowance of $1,800 a month in addition to his, to how much he made. Because you lived on base. No, that's well, old. They don't do that anymore. Well, base housing um, is a subsidiary, yes. Because right. Of it's, a it's family true. situation. But to your statement, people aren't forced into the military. That's the decision they choose to do. Oh, exactly. We yeah, don't have a draft. Cool. But most people choose to be in the military because they don't have any other options. So there is. There's of, always a options. Lot of, a lot of our military members have mental health disorders. Um, a lot of them are need psychiatric help, um, and a lot of them cannot function in normal society. And I'm not sure saying you, once again. Mm, um, I was an ombudsman. Uh, absolutely, they cannot. Sure, they can. And the divorce rate is extremely high, seventy-one percent. Um, it the military. I would not recommend my worst enemy to join the military. It is a horrible environment. Depends on what you get out in. of it. Hmm? Depends on what you get out of it. It's just like any other job. I'd say vast majority of them don't get anything out of it. They'll get a job when they get out, and then they don't know how to function in regular society, and they lose their job, and they end up homeless. Because they choose not to function. You can say what you will. I've seen both sides. They choose to do what they do. No, and I, there are. I mean, I commend my father for being in for so long. Uh, su our suicide rates on nukes are the highest out of any MOS in the military. Um, he made it through. He didn't kill himself. Um, I All think a lot of being on that is because they sit in a submarine f for months on end without seeing anything. Six, yeah, absolutely. Um, but. I mean, there are, uh, there, of course, there are great military members, and I'm not knocking the military as a whole. I just think to sit here and say that they don't make money is a farce, lie. It's, it's, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't what I mean exist. by they don't make, what I mean by that is they're not making million dollar paychecks like a football but player. But like you said, it's their choice. They can go out and be a capitalist, they can go out and, and, and own a business and but make money. Is capitalism the right way to go? No. Well, then that's the choice they made. They, they made a choice to live a certain lifestyle. And I don't think that you should be commended for volunteering to sit behind a desk all day long. And get I never sat behind a desk. I was in the action. I know you were. I'm not really, a desk person. But the majority of the 1.3 million military members we currently have that are on the front lines is this big. Actually, it's bigger than that. No. Okay, let me ask you this question. Being an ombudsman... How many people do you think actually sit behind a desk versus goes out and does the hands-on actual combat? Percentage-wise? Yeah. Do you mean do you mean during wartime or just a normal Peace time? Right now? Yeah. Um, I'd say out of the one point three, maybe th maybe three hundred thousand that are at doing active training on a daily basis to go to war at any given time. Uh, let me the, let me clear you in on million, something. The one million are doing uh, regular main, maintenance repairs on vehicles, on helicopters, jets, uh, subs, ships, um, electronic work. Uh, it's just a regular job. It's just a regular job. Okay, right now there is seven hundred million active military personnel. There are seven hundred oh. million active personnel in, in yes. America. Yes. We have 360, 360 million people. So how does that work? Uh, it, it carries the water, man. Like, no. Oh, you meant 700,000. It's actually one point. It's closer to 1.3 million. Uh, of the active military personnel, 3% are what we call pencil pushers. Not true. Oh, okay. When I said behind a desk, I, I, I That's guess a I meant pencil pusher. Them. Okay, I didn't mean a pencil pusher. I mean, I mean anybody who is not actively on the front lines fighting for our country. Okay, but he, he, here's the funny part. Even a pencil pusher 
if their unit gets called up to go somewhere, that pencil pusher goes with that unit. They do grab their weapon and they mm-hmm. do go out in combat. Absolutely. When did that happen last? That's happening right now. Where? Just because we're in peacetime doesn't mean there's not conflicts Where? going on. Where are the conflicts that we're currently uh, in? Right now, we've got, what is it, 20,000 soldiers in, oh, what town, What state, what country is it? Next to uh, Ukraine. That most of them were so-called desk jockeys or pencil pushers that are with their unit, armed and ready to go to battle if they have to. Right, 20,000. So what's 20,000 out of 1.3 million? That's Nothing. just one unit. <laughs> That's just one so, unit. So one unit has 20,000 of their members just sitting around waiting for things to happen in just that one spot. And there's how many around the world then? How many bases you want to know about? Okay, well, and do you know, um, of course you should know. Um, so they're over there. Let's just take Bahrain, for instance, because I'm pretty well versed on that. So, so am I. I've been there quite a few times. Okay, so you know that you got hazard duty pay, right? Oh, yes, I did. I also got sea pay. And you got per diem, correct? No. Oh, because you were on a ship. Let's yes. just let's just say you're not on a ship and you're in Bahrain. If I was not on a ship, I'd get per diem, a daily per diem, yes. Yeah, and you, do you know how much that daily per diem is? Depends on your rank. $200. Let's just say you're in E4. Depends on your rank. Okay, let's say you're in E4 over there. You're getting $200. E4, you're getting 250 Okay, two fifty a day. day. Right. My ex-husband came back with thirty thousand dollars of untaxable income extra for a four-month deployment to Bahrain and didn't do a thing. I came back with more than that. For what? So what are you complaining about? The military get paid very well. They get paid more. They get better. They get better pay and benefits than anybody no, no. in this country. Okay. The only thing good about the military, honestly. Is the health care that they get while they're active duty. Everything is covered, no matter what it is. Everything is covered 100 percent I don't know. I heard rumors on the internet that if like you're low in the military and uh you know, based on the number of hours you're on duty, the pay may not be the greatest overall. So well, I, the, the, no, the, the, the way the, the way the pay in the military works, it's based off of your rank. Everybody starts off as an E1 and works their way up. That's not to true. Either, Jeff. E5. That is not true either, Jeff. It is true. It's based on no, your rank. Not. No, it is not. E1 makes no. less than an E2. E2 makes Absolutely. less than an E3. Okay, E3 makes saying, less though. than an E4. Jeff, E4 Jeff, makes less down. than E5. Jeff. Jeff. Okay, yes, there is a pay scale based off of your rank. Absolutely. What I was saying was not true is that everyone goes in as an E1. That is not true. It depends on your college. If you've taken any college courses, they'll they'll push you up a rank for that before boot camp. Actually, no. College will have you go into OCS. No, that's that's only if you've done a certain amount of college. If you've done some credit hours, they will they will bust you up in rank one. Okay, so then you're in E2. They're not in Ukraine. They're in the country next to Ukraine. Termite. Okay, don't worry about them for a second, Jeff. Then they can they can they can bring you up another rank if you pass the PT test no. under a certain amount. Absolutely, no. absolutely, no. freaking lutely. So you no. can go you can go into the army. I know this because I was in. You can go into the army as an E3. You can even go into the army as an E4, all depending on what you do prior to boot camp. So to say that somebody's going in as an E1, it hardly happens because they try to get you to the highest rank they possibly can if you're enlisted prior to boot camp so you can get the pay that you deserve. There okay. are hardly any E1s in the military. This one I'm about to burst your bubble. Can I jump, jump in real quick? Gabby, can I call you Gabby? Or G- yeah, that's Go ahead, Phil. Uh, yeah, Gabby, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, I agree with an earlier point you, you mentioned of, uh, you know, the kind of predatory recruitment practices. Uh, I got a college degree and I can, I can barely take care of myself in society. So I almost am tempted, like, oh, maybe I'll join the military, but I'm smarter than to, to do that. But yeah. Do you know why I joined the military, Phil? What was that? I got to see the world for free. That's what they all, that's what all the recruit. Jeff, were you a recruiter? Because that's what all of no. the recruiters tell these kids. No, but I did see the world for free and I got paid to do it. Well, good for you. That's awesome. I mean, hey, there's a lot of benefits to being in the military. You just made my point again. There are so many benefits to being in the military that to but sit here I'm and about say to burst your they... bubble. 
the moment <laughs> somebody signs that dotted line and they are accepted into boot camp, mm -hmm. everybody goes into boot camp very first day as an E1. Now, with that being said, let, before you roll your eyes, Gabby, mm -hmm. with that being said, if you took ROTC in high school, you were bumped up to an E3. Mm -hmm. If you took ROTC in college as well as ROTC in high school, you were bumped up to an E4 or possibly sent to OCS, depending on how long and how many years of ROTC in college you took. If you took four years, you were automatically sent over to OCS, which is officer candidate school. Yep. Right. Now, yeah, you're right. With that, with that That's being said, yeah. everybody who goes into boot camp day one is an E1. They're treated as an E1. They're not paid as an E1. They are paid as an E1. No, they're not. They are. The, the second they graduate from boot camp, they are not paid as an E1. I didn't say once they graduated boot camp. I said once they go into boot camp, for they the are an E1. For the three months of boot camp, big whoopity do, and then they go to MOS. How do you figure three months? And then they get paid. How do you figure three months? How long is boot camp? It's a, it depends on what. Um, it's the same length in every branch. Three months? No. What is it then? 16 weeks. Sorry, I forgot a month. 16 weeks for every branch. It's all standard on the length of boot camp for every branch. 16 weeks. Okay, so I have a question. Thank you. Please. please. Okay. <laughs> Do we think maybe the convoy should join the military? Yes. Just no. kidding. Just kidding. No. <laughs> Just kidding. No, they will not survive. Oh. Like, you know, give me a minute to think about that. Mm -hmm. Oreo, absolutely. He needs to go. Uh, <laughs> I can see Oreo there two days before he got a blanket party. Yeah, he'd be crying. <laughs> It'd take him two days, he'd get a blanket party. <laughs> I'm serious. Two days, he'd get a blanket party. Ooh, what's that? Oh, a blanket party? Okay, uh, yeah, a blanket yeah. party. We don't need to know what a blanket party is. <gasps> no, 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 no. It's not what you think. A blanket party is when you get your fellow recruits or fellow army men, navy men, marine men, whatever branch you're in, is upset with somebody. They take a blanket while you're in your rack, grab four corners of the blanket, pull you down, and hold you into the rack. While everybody else takes a towel with a bar of soap wrapped up in it and beat you with it. Sounds like fun. Well, that escalated quickly. That's why they call it a blanket party because you're being held down by a blanket. And everybody comes by and hits you once or two, one or two times with that bar of soap as hard as they can, and everybody in your division gets a chance to do that. Everybody. It's disgusting, personally. I, I kind of home. It, it, it's what they call um, no, no, self motivation. It's called hazing. No, it's Le self motivation. Legally. It's legally hazing. It, yes and no. It is. it is, but the military doesn't look at it that way. It, they call not. they look at it self motivation. Yeah, I'm sure they don't. They don't allow that anymore. By the way, I know it's been a while. No, I know they don't. Just like when you cross the equator, you don't go through an initiation anymore. You just handed a piece of paper. Well, this isn't the '80s Navy, and you can't do co a line of coke off a prostitute's ass anymore. Those days are over. This is a new military. <laughs> I don't know. I never did that. Oh. What is no, that? I just with this one time, maybe. maybe. Nope. I have the same policy in my life that I had in the military, zero tolerance for any drugs. Well, that's good. And the I funny part is, while I was in the military, I was drunk pretty much the entire time I was in. When I got out, I quit drinking. I didn't need to drink anymore. Well, that's mm -hmm. good, too. But back to back to my point was that um, I think the military, um, the military argument is a little bit silly i think if anybody actually knew what goes on in the military you'd be surprised what you don't know about what goes on in the military well, i guess i would be but i worked on base every day so i wouldn't be that surprised it didn't um, happen on home base jeff once again you haven't been in the military in 20 years things have changed oh yeah it's gotten before they become pussies They've got well, thank God. So maybe maybe there will be less divorces in the military. I don't know anybody. No, the, that's the, the, not the divorce rate's even higher now. It's horrible. Well, a lot of that has to do is because of the deployments. The guys being gone six months, a year, year and a half, two years. That that that's time away 
takes a, a big toll effect on families. It Gary, really does. There is, there is lots of gay sex. Absolutely. Especially <laughs> like, in the I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, thinking about, you know, I guess what's going to. So let me ask you this. What do we think is going to happen moving forward with the Roe versus Wade? What do we think? It's going to revert down to the state level, and the states are going to pass their own laws however they see fit. I can okay. think of 13 that are already way ahead of that plot. Because the Supreme Court already said that once it, they overturn this, it is now the responsibilities of each state to make the determination on how they should handle abortions in their state. Instead of one law canvassing every state. So you're going to have different laws in every single state. Yeah. And G. Abbott, do you know what what our lovely governor here, what we're <laughs> doing? I so, can only um, imagine. So we, we have the trigger law in place from what okay. I am aware of. Um, it looks like Ken Paxton is trying to make today a, a state holiday, which is beautiful. Um, and, uh, Lieutenant, uh, governor came out and basically said that this is the beginning of, of, um, you know, a complete ban. And we have a big population. It's not like Mississippi. This is Texas. It's right. We have 20, 29 million people. Is, is that all it is? Is 29? Yeah. You'd think it'd be more, but it's 29. I, I guess it's there. because everything's so damn far apart. <laughs> I think what I think, Joy, hopefully what, what would happen is that um, hopefully it goes down to a, a, even more of a local level and places like Austin. Could, um, I, I, I think possibly, it, it will stay state level instead of going city level. Well, I think what's going to happen is Joy and, and my, my pa- uh, children mm-hmm. will take over eventually. And then, um, you know, things will settle back down. I think our kids are far more resilient than a lot of the older generations. And I think our children are far more compassionate. Um, And I think it'll, it'll, it'll revert back. It's just going to take some time. I agree. I think my, even my daughter, you know, and I consider myself a pretty nice person. You know, I try not to say horrible things, but you know, I, I know sometimes I would say maybe a phrase or something and yeah, she'd be like, mom, you can't say that. I'm like, you know what? You're right. That, you know, so I think they are very aware. I think why can't you say why can't you say you're afraid of something? Huh? Why can't you say you're afraid of something? That's oh, just being no, human. No. Like maybe I would say something that was rude or you know, I don't know, you know, just judgmental and but then once I think about it, I'm like, oh, that was kind of a snarky thing to say. You know, I think this generation is just thoughtful. Um, I think they're extremely intelligent. Um, I know when she hit about the fifth, sixth grade, I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't help you with your homework anymore. Uh-huh. Same here. You know, Same. it was very competitive. Um, yes. Because here in Austin, it used to be you had to be in the top 10% of your class to get it into UT. Well, now it's like the top 6%. Um you know, it's really competitive for those kids out there. And, but this is the thing. I think we, our generation, we all need to stop being so divided so we can be a good examples for them, you know, yeah. and maybe we would have a shot at cleaning up the country, cleaning up the government, but it's individual choices. You know, I feel like nobody, the media, Facebook, they're not dividing us. We make those individual choices to post those memes, post the misinformation, you know. I don't know. I don't have an answer, and I don't know when it's going to stop. But I feel like the abortion bans are just going to further divide us. Right. It's a catalyst catalyst for everything else. Yeah, I I agree. And Termite, to your comment, E1 through E10 are all non-commissioned. You're not commissioned until you become an O, which starts at O1, which is an ensign and goes up. Right, and you got to go to OCS. E1 through E10 is non-commissioned officers. They wear dungarees, which are blue. Right now they're digital blue, and I don't know why they did that. The digi- Makes it harder to see them in the middle if they fall in the water. 
Mm-hmm. They did it because the other uniforms were boring. I don't know. I don't know why they did it. No but idea. the problem is if somebody falls off a ship, it makes it harder to find them. Well, yeah. Dean wants to know who you mod for, Jeff. Does it matter? No, it don't. So you do mod for someone. Yes, but it doesn't oh. matter. Okay. Well, well, well. No. It doesn't help because, you know, oof, seems... Yes, it, seems it. it don't. Hmm. Well, that's cool. Actually, um, so, okay, so being a mod, what does that entail? And if you mod for different people, do you have to change your mod depending on who you're modding for? Or you're, not your mod, but your method. style. Uh, it yeah. depends on what the streamer wants as their guidelines for their chat room. Okay. We don't determine what whoever the streamer is. They set the guidelines for that particular room, and as mods, we follow those guidelines to allow people to basically to have freedom. Unless you go into certain rooms where you have no freedoms. Yeah. Basically, we try keeping the room towards respectful, active, fun, and it keeps things moving. Okay. And people aren't being turned away because of something they might want to say or might not want to say. Do you actively participate on behind the mirror chats? I. This is my second time I've been on my on behind the mirror. Okay. And do you like it here? I mean, do you feel? I, like I sit back and I read the room and watch what people say. Okay. Like I said, I sit in the middle. Okay. We, I think we had a nice chat maybe a little bit, uh, maybe a week ago. It was, it was yeah, good. we did. Because you got your far left side, you got your far right side, and both sides have their own opinions. And it, it, it's like a, a, a trial. You have side A, you got side B, and somewhere in the middle is the truth. And hey, as... Justice is supposed to be blind. You're supposed to listen to both sides, look at the facts, and then you make your judgment call. Same way with left, right, or right side. You listen to both sides, you hear both sides, and somewhere between both sides is there, there's a common ground, which is in the middle. Yeah. How do we... Okay, QAnon has taken on a life of its own. Movement was done the moment it went to California. <sighs> He's answering questions from the chat for some reason. Oh, Joy, okay. go ahead and ask your um, question. Go ahead, go ahead and ask okay. your question, Joy. So how do we combat the QAnon fanatics, the ones who are just out with the tinfoil hats, the this is Bill Gates is out to get you and this and this. And, you know, you hear them talk and you think <laughs> that's higher, but they they. It's funny you bring up Bill Gates. That man just got shafted on a land deal. <laughs> well, how do we how do we combat those people? I mean, do you just let them go on living their lives or you got no choice? <sighs> yeah. Can if, we if please let other people speak in this conversation? Yeah, Jay before, Bracey, well, yeah. Go ahead, all the rest sir. of us leave. <laughs> go ahead. Yes. I mean I see it being totally dominated and honestly I know I'm, I'm trying. I ready to jump off. I'm I'm re- I mean, I'm, I'm really trying. It's it's a little more difficult. I, know, I understand that. But to your question, Joy, it's their choice. Okay, J three. See, see what I'm saying? I'm hearing you now, J three. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. We were talking about Roe versus Wade. Yes. Which was the the context of this discussion. So I'd like to go back to that because we really haven't talked about that that much. Okay, go for it. Um, I'd like to say that in my state, which is a Midwestern, very red state, we don't have a trigger law. But I I fully expect within the next two weeks, our governor is going to convene a a special session of the legislature and I honestly believe they're going to just ban abortion totally. Now, I'm 52 years old, and I've lived almost all of my life with having my own bodily autonomy rights, and now I'm not going to. And I think that's the biggest, the biggest issue right now. 
um, it, it doesn't really matter if somebody is pro-life or pro-choice. It has to do with body autonomy, and that's what we're losing. We're becoming second-class citizens in a respect because I don't have the control over my own body. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that people aren't really grasping yet. Yeah, we're going to have differences on, you know, is pro-abortion, pro-life, pro-choice, all of the all of the different opinions, but when it comes down to it, the fact is women are losing freedoms that we have always had. Absolutely. So that's important. And I think we need to talk about that a little bit more. Okay, I'm done. Absolutely, well, Jeffrey. Joy, do you wanna do you wanna chime in? I think we're gonna do a women's perspective for just a moment. Joy, do you wanna chime in? I agree. It's not about pro life, pro choice, but women are losing that control over their body. Um, and it seems like it's not protecting their health, whether you agree with it or not. Um, and I'm just praying for these women who are out there that they will have access to safe health care. Um, and J3, I have a question for you too. This, the state you're in, because it sounds like it's pretty conservative. What is the current health care for women? Do women currently have access to safe clinics? Because I didn't realize in some states, some states may only have one clinic for the whole state. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, in my state, we had... We've had Republican leadership now for, oh, I think six to eight years where we've had a trifecta. And in that time, we have had uh, access to reproductive health care drastically reduced. We've had funding cut off for Planned Parenthood for not only abortion care, but for contraception care, for STD testing, for um, detecting cancers, all of the other things that are provided by reproductive health care. And because of that, we've had lots of clinics closed. And of course, a lot of us said at the time, well, you know what's going to happen, don't you? Well, oh, no, these things won't happen. But yes, they have. We've had an increase in the number of, of abortions. We've had an increase in the amount of sexually transmitted d diseases. And we've had an increase in uh, breast cancer, um, uh, uterine cancer, and all those things that are tested for in um, Planned Parenthood types of clinics. Now, the, the money that has been um, taken away from Planned Parenthood type clinics has been given to the crisis pregnancy centers that, um, that really aren't crisis, crisis pregnancy centers. They're, they're centers that try to convince you and pressure you to not have an abortion or not make the choice that you want to take. So those have popped up. Um, they've had little to no effect, obviously, because the abortion rate has skyrocketed here. So in the last mm, five years, the care has been dismal. And right now, I can only think of a couple different places where you can even get reproductive health care. And luckily, um, I live in one of those. It's the biggest town in the state. So of course, we have it here, but I can't tell you how many times I have directed girls who are searching for answers to go to a local Planned Parenthood just to get information. Sure. If we don't have that anymore, we know what's going to happen. Absolutely. So that's kind of the state of my state right now. You know, that, and you brought up a point, and I had, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I did, I think it was on the CDC website or some website, and it showed the states with the highest percentage of abortions per capita and sexually transmitted diseases. And a lot of red states were high in those stats. And it almost makes me wonder sometimes, is this why, does that go into wanting to board or ban abortions because these states have higher statistics? That's a good point. 
That's a really good point. And it probably it very well may, may be. I said that earlier, you know, a lot of these um, Christians that are pushing this and have pushed it and have ach- achieved that. I mean, they are so hip- hypocritical to say that their mistresses or whomever they get pregnant are not going to continue getting abortions. Money talks, you know, bullshit walks. Any rich guy can go pay any doctor to give anyone anyone an abortion if need be. So for them, it's not an issue. Um, and especially in this state, you know, one in every five children goes hungry every single day in the state of Texas. Who's taking care of these kids? Yeah. We don't, you know, Republicans don't want government funding. They don't want to help people out, yet they want everyone to have a child. It doesn't make any sense. And then with the convoy people and the, the body autonomy, and it's my body, my choice for the vaccine, but we don't, we don't get that privilege as women. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It's so hypocritical. Hey, I'm rich. I can travel out of state real easy. Get, get your bootstraps up, y'all. <laughs> In- yeah, I, I would love to get out of here. Yeah, J3, you brought up a really good point about not just, you know, what about the testing for women and, you know, all of these other women's health care? So what have, are we, are women going to start losing that as well, which has shrunk in the last few years? You know, over time, those are not accessible to people. <sighs> that and, you know, Planned Parenthood often operates on a sliding scale. So if you don't have the funds, they adjust the cost for you. Yes, they do. So You're who's who's going to adjust that? And I was specifically thinking about Texas because you guys have not expanded Medicaid. Isn't that correct? No, it has not been expanded. So how are you going to take care of children when you won't even provide health care for them? That's exactly my point. We have all of these issues, these underlying issues. And who's taking care of these kids? I just, it's, I know that we're all adults and we we need to have personal accountability. And that's why I try to instill in both of my children, because my son can go get someone pregnant when he's older, just as easily as my daughter can get pregnant. So I I don't, I don't discriminate for either of them. I, I speak very openly about sex, about protection, but I could scream at them until my face is blue and they're still going to have unprotected sex. Um, just like a lot of other people. So of course their personal, personal accountability has to come into play. But as we all know, everybody, for the most part, has a drunken night. You know, it happens. These things happen. And to sit here and say, like Jeff did, you know, don't use it as birth control. We as women aren't using it as birth control. I don't know a woman in my life that if I asked them, hey, are you using abortion as birth control, would ever, ever say yes. Because it's just not fact. We don't want to do that. It's not fun. It's not something enjoyable. Right, Joy? And if a woman is having multiple abortions, which I do, unfortunately, had a friend one time, a coworker, you know, she's a pretty good friend and, you know, did mention, oh yeah, I had my, the only reason why I had my daughter, I didn't have money for abortion. And again, this is a very small percentage, but Mm -hmm. this goes on to a bigger picture of if someone is using that, how can we get that person help? you know, in the medical field of, no, you need permanent birth control, you know, and getting people educated in safe birth control so we can prevent, you know, those smaller cases of people abusing the system, you know? Absolutely. And I think that's what we need. Just, and what about child care? I know when, and my daughter was, she'll be 21 pretty soon, but I know when we put her in daycare, it was at least a thousand dollars or more a week for child care. Who can My, afford yeah. that? Mine was um, 400 and it was a very, I mean, this was when I was first freshly a single mom. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't afford much. I was a stay at home mom for eight years. So I hadn't worked the whole time. So I can only afford so much. And it was almost, it was over $400 a week for both of my kids. And that was on the cheap end of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they think all of this is going to work out. I just, I think women are going to continue doing it. They're going to, uh, there's a lot of holistic methods 
that they could possibly be able to use. Um, I think a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of, I'm not trying to be gross, but a lot of coat hangers are going to be coming out. Um, I think um, when you, when you have an abortion, unless you're like your coworker where it's just an habitual kind of weird person that would do that anyway, but um, you know, desperation comes in many forms. And when you're desperate enough, um, you know, I've watched a lot of videos on women where they're abused by their partners. They're forced into sex by their partners and they're forced to have children. And if they, if they don't have the avenue to, you know, be able to obtain an abortion, they're just bringing more children into that life. I just, this, it seems as though the people who have more of a charmed existence who have a mom and dad were together all, all their lives. They have a decent job. They're able to take care of their families. They don't understand the other perspective. They don't know how to put their shoe, their foot in another person's shoe. They just don't understand how to walk in someone else's life. And I think that's where it's lacking in the GOP. My father, I'm going to put him in there again. He does not get how other people live. It doesn't even register in his brain. Um, and so I think that's where this comes from a lot is these people just, they have, they're completely devoid of any type of compassion for anybody else. It's just my way or no way. Okay. I got the question for all three of you women. Yes. You pro-life or pro-choice. And with that being said, do you understand there is one option once it does get to the state level, you guys still can use it is called an unconstitutional law. Hmm. Okay, repeat the last part. Yeah. Do you understand there is still a avenue you can use if it does become a law to go against the state as an unconstitutional law? You, are you yeah, talking but where are you going to find the provider to do it? Right, exactly. How do you do that? Where do you find them? Word of mouth? I mean, good luck. No, 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 no. It's easy to fight unconstitutional laws. I don't know if I understand what you're saying. Okay. Texas, for example, if you go to another state to get an abortion, you get arrested for it. That's one of the laws that they got on the books that right now is being fought to be unconstitutional. Right. Because it is a freedom of choice. A state cannot take your constitutional rights away from you. So any law that goes against the Constitution is an unconstitutional law that can be fought in court and won. So what you're saying is, is, go ahead, Phil, go ahead. Yeah, Phil. Yeah, so um, it's already been run up the ladder to the Supreme Court, so just so a do-over. Just do that again <laughs> is what, what you're suggesting, right? Uh, okay. Or on the state level, it sounds expensive. Uh, it sounds expensive. There are there are lawyers out there that look for unconstitutional violations. They they thrive on it because they like fighting for the Constitution. And any law that goes against the Constitution, these lawyers will take head on to fight for our constitutional rights. And one of our constitutional rights is freedom of choice. So are you saying, are you asking us if we would seek counsel in the case of whether or not? No, I'm, I, I, I'm asking if you realize that avenue is out there. Well, right. You, but how many people are doing that? We all have lives. We have jobs. We have kids. Nobody has time to do that. That shouldn't even be, that shouldn't even be an option. We shouldn't have to do that if it's a constitutional right. Well, Joy, go ahead. It will be challenged. I mean, yes. do you, okay. So, well, and I guess, you know, kind of J3's question was, what do we think this ban is going to do? And I guess, are we just going to see a bunch of both sides are going to battle each other with lawsuits right now? I mean, is that what's going to happen? <laughs> what, yeah. what that means is, not necessarily a lawsuit, but mm -hmm. as the, the way the Constitution is written, people do have freedoms of choices. Yeah. And termite, it doesn't have to say abortion. Freedom of choice is freedom of choice is freedom of choice. That's our God-given right. Well, I want to know. That's Jay our Perry, human rights. 
J3, would you want to chime in on kind of what you think is going to happen as far as the courts and what maybe different states might we might start seeing? Do you have any insight in that? Um, I, I do. I've heard I've heard a lot about um, a challenge based on uh, religious uh, standing because certain religions um, it is perfectly acceptable and normal and expected that an abortion would occur. So that would be a right under religious freedom. So I do know that that is one that is being considered. I know that the three western coast states of California, Oregon, and Washington are uh, working on making a tri-state uh, some sort of law to uh, prevent uh, red states who try to prevent uh, their their residents from going to one of those three states and doing something and then coming back because that's just re that's restriction of movement and travel it's just ridiculous on its face but there will be lawsuits um other lawsuits uh i don't know the only thing i can think of is that it's going to have to be codified um i had heard somewhere that um, making federal property in states that do not have abortion rights, making the federal property in those states, uh, abortion uh, areas like the VA hospitals or something like that. But I don't know if that was just a pipe dream or what, but, mm -hmm. you know, creative things like that might help. But what it comes down to is body autonomy. So it doesn't matter if, if I'm pro-choice or pro-abortion or pro-life, I'm pro-mind your own fucking business. It's not your business, Jeff, what I do with my body. It's just not. But I didn't ask you what you do with your body. I just asked you where you were standing. None of your business. Um, I'm, That's a fair I'm, answer. I'm pro-condom. That's my stance. I'm pro-condom. I'm pro-keeping it zipped. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if these men would... Put a condom on it. You know, condoms are what ninety-eight percent effective. Yeah, no, but I think true, women are two-way street. Yeah, women are just as uh, just as capable mm -hmm. of saying, "Hey, put put a condom on." You, you know, know. And, it, and we we've all been there in that lustful moment where he's like, "Well, it yes. doesn't feel as good," and whatever, and and so we do it, and we've done it. And to sit and Jeff, your point, keep it. I mean, keep it zipped up. Okay, that all abstinence sounds great, but it's not logical. Especially now. I mean, look how free everybody is for the most part as with their bodies, with their with how they um, you know, present themselves, especially with the younger generation. You know, I can tell my son to forever to put a condom on, but more than likely I have to come to the reality that he's probably not going to do it every single time. Um, and so that's why I'm a big proponent of birth control. Unfortunately, it can cause cancer and that sucks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's side effects, right? But it's the option that we have. Um, you yeah. know, I went through, I think, like 10 different types of birth control before I, you know, came to one that didn't make me sick, uh, didn't make me feel like absolute shit all the time, or angry, or you know, any of that. So, um, I, we like I said, we all have our own personal responsibility to take care of our responsibilities, but it doesn't mean we have to take away something that is, is it. Is, it can be used as a safety net versus a the ultimate end all be all of, of what we need to do. But it does. I, I just don't. I don't see what the point of stripping it away is. It does nothing for anybody because we will not me, me personally, but <laughs> women will find a way to do it, and that's that. Oh, a lot of it has to do with the way you're raised. The way I was raised is you don't do that until you're married. That's just not how it works today. Right. Why right. not? So it doesn't work more. It's a fantasy world, but that's not how the world that's works. That's not fantasy. That's reality. It's called morals. No. The no morals of what? Biblical morals? I mean, you're judging people. It has nothing to do with the Bible. It's being raised in what you think is right versus wrong. Your morals. Okay, J3, can you, can you back me up on this one? How... Education. How was it in the 50s or 60s and early on, and anyone get on this, what about the women back in the day who had to hide? They went away for nine months. They, yep. 
I feel like people are still doing the same things. It's just, we do it more in the open now. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you were a bad person if you got pregnant. Yeah. You were kind of you were watched, away. Has nobody seen Dirty Dancing? It's like, hello? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was more a fan of Footloose, personally. Oh, I'm, yeah. The moral objectivism, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's... It, it, it's happening. Yeah. The unwed mothers were sent away. Um, this world is a different place in that regard. And this all boils down to a progressive. We as humans are progressive in nature. If not, we would all be Neanderthals right now. Um, not true. Okay. Whatever. Um, we progress. It doesn't matter. Mentally, physically, we, we progress. We learn, we grow, we do new things, we're innovative, we come up with new ways to do things. To sit here and to, I think the Constitution can be a living document, just like the Bible is. It, I don't know why I did that, but um, it, it can and should be treated as a living document. We are not in 1776. Women were treated like shit in 1776. Yeah. Like absolute shit, like dog shit. The Bible doesn't have one story written by a woman. Not one. Actually, the Bible wasn't written by anybody. It was interpreted. Right. Well, either way, Good it difference. wasn't interpreted by a woman of or or I, other I agree. Voice either. I, I don't agree with the fact that there is no woman insight into it. There should have been. But back then, that's how things were. Right. Well, we're still continuing that to this day. A woman doesn't have a right to her own body. She or does. Biblical times. No, she doesn't. No, she no, doesn't. She not does. That's over now. No, that's what was taken away today. Yes. Unless you live in California. That's why you Oregon. fight the unconstitutionality of it. Just because the Constitution doesn't say you have the right to do an abortion doesn't mean it's not unconstitutional. It doesn't matter. It doesn't it matter. Does it does matter. It makes access incredibly difficult now, Jeff. Incredibly mm -hmm. difficult. You nope. think a woman on a fixed income making $11 an hour with two children at home is going to be able to afford to go across state lines to go get an abortion? Do you think that's feasible? It, it, you don't even know what the states are going to do yet. They have. I, they don't even know what I know what, what my do state yet. is doing right now. Texas They're has already doing. done it. We already know what Texas is doing. No, Texas did up until six weeks. Now it's completely banned. And if someone lives, say, where you live, Jeff, how the hell are they getting out of the state if they don't have any money? You know how long of a drive that is? Two hours. Then, oh, you live, oh, I'm sorry, you live in North Texas. I thought you said South Texas. No, I live okay, in North well, Texas. If you live in, if you live in South Texas, it's a nine-hour drive. Good luck. <laughs> what city you live in? Right, exactly. But uh, you think Oklahoma, Louisiana, Mississippi, uh, Arkansas, any of the states around Texas are going to have abortions? I, I don't know. They haven't. Maybe New Mexico out yet. I'm I'm from the top right, bottom left, middle Texas, and you know you can get to uh, the other states in like 15 minutes, so it's all good. <laughs> Where in Texas can you get anywhere in 15 minutes? So. Top. Oh, wait, hold on. Top left, bottom right, middle. You must be up in the panhandle. Yes. That's Pan the only reason why. Because if you're down in where we're at, 15 minutes, you're not very far from your house, and you still haven't gotten anywhere. Buddy, I'm in Houston, 15 minutes. I'm in Louisiana. I'll see. Where I'm at, I'm pretty much just east of Dallas, and I'm in dead middle of the damn state. 15 minutes, you're still on the highway. You're not driving fast enough. That's doing 80 miles an hour. <laughs> That's how far towns are out here. I know, but like personally from Houston, it's it's 15 minutes to the border for me. Yeah. That's two from hours Houston, from where I'm from at. Houston? Yep. From Houston, it's 15 minutes to what border? Uh, um, um, hold on. Louisiana. Louisiana. I mean, that's Rel it's Rel two and a half hours. Logistic space. Phil, I live near Houston as well. And if I want to go to Lake Charles to gamble, it's a two and a half hour drive. 
Yeah, no, I'm trolling. I, I live in, in Oh, I'm like, what the heck? I knew you were trolling. Um, <laughs> but back to my point, it's just, you know, you don't have money for gas to even get to work, some of these people, Jeff. Uh, so to, you know, and, and primarily abortions are with low income women. I understand that's that. That's who it's going to affect. Yes, okay. and it's absolutely horrible. But so, you guys are barking up the wrong tree. I, I believe in women have a choice of what they do. The only time I don't agree with it is if they're using it for birth control. I'm not saying all women do, but there are quite a few women that do. And that's none of your that's business, all- Jeff. Sorry, none of your point. business. I disagree with that if I happen to be the man that caused that child to be conceived. But you're not. So, okay. How do you know I'm not I'm one, I'm one of them? You don't. Go ahead, Julie. Go ahead. Julie, go ahead. Just okay, so I have a serious question. And maybe, okay, so now this has happened. They made their decision. Um, whether you're a pro life or pro choice, if we're wanting to help women keep their rights, what do we do now? So I just kind of Googled really quickly. You know, it looks like there's a nonprofit in Texas called Fun Texas Choice. It seems like they will help women, you know, travel to other states. To an extent. So what do we do? Do we write our senators, write our congressmen? How do how do we get the word out? How do we build momentum to help women keep rights? I mean, is is it just a done deal or? I, I don't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, J3. I don't have the answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's going to take a lot of legislation. I think it's I think the best thing that we can do right now is to continue to embrace the younger generation and stop talking so much shit about them and the way that they are right now or the way they dress or whatever else people have a problem with. They need to be embraced. I think um making them feel less than is the wrong path to to go. Um, You know, help them. They already know what's up. Uh, Like you said, Joy, they're so smart and they have access to internet 24 seven. We did not have that growing up. Um, So just keep embracing their ideologies because yes, they're just kids. So of course they're going to be a little crazy and they're going to do things that some people might not like, but I think the vote is going to be the biggest voice. Unfortunately, most of our senators or congressmen are right wing, far right wing in Texas. Um, And so, yeah, yours too. And so getting to our Democratic representatives really does nothing because they have no voice here. You can't do that to the Republican ones here. They're in the same boat. Do what? We, We got a new. Hi, baby. Hi. How are you? Both sides of the pro- both sides of the aisle are just as guilty as the other. What? Huh? Hey, girl, hey. I had to join because I've had the whole day to just stay away from the TV. So <laughs> I decided we're, we're instead of bitching on my own underneath my breath, I'd come here instead. Perfect. What do you got to say? Well, I think what's difficult for me as a black woman. I feel like I've been screaming about this for ever. Mm-hmm. And it's very, and, and I'm going to just state this as bl- I've spoken to black women all day long and we are all apathetic to it. It's difficult. We don't want to be, but it's very, very difficult. Yeah. I can understand that to a degree. Um, you know, I think that unfortunately politicians have used black people in general as a ploy for a lot of different views, um, or decisions or whatnot. Um, and I I think that's a travesty in itself. Um, I personally don't think it matters what color you are. If you want to do something with your body, you should be able to do it. Oh, no. I mean, I agree. And all of that, I totally agree with, I think What's difficult for us is it feels as though we were pointing this out in 2014, 2015, 2016, yelling at the top of our lungs saying this is exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. And we were told that we were being hysterical. Right. 
Uh, I got a question for you, G. Evett. Yeah. We're in 2022, correct? Yeah. When is the racism going to stop? That's when there's question. equality. There is equality. No, there everybody's isn't. equal. No, no there, stop there that, isn't. Jeff. This That's is, the exact. I'm sorry, baby. Go ahead. Look, I understand, and I have, and honestly, Jeff, I'm going to tell you this. I 100% agree with you, but the problem is, is that it's not there yet. And I do agree with you. Your premise of what you're saying makes total sense. And in kind of a weird way, it works. But what happens is, is that you kind of have to even the playing field first. Then there isn't. That's the thing. And what you're saying, and, and I, I don't want to belittle what you're saying at all, Jeff, because it is a beautiful sentiment. Uh, it is so lovely. And, and I, I wish, I wish with all my heart that it was true at this moment, but it's not. Oh, I know. That's the sad part. And it should be. It should be. And I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. But pretending that it's there and right. just saying, let's just pretend that it's there so that we can all be equal doesn't work. And let me give you an example of that. That was done in South Africa. And what happened was a lot of black um, animosity towards the white settlers that were there because they owned all the land. It was like, yay, you're free, but I'm still stuck in the same place. And I think that you have to still first deal with underlying issues like generational gap wealth, generational education. And once you deal with those issues, I think that your sentiment is a beautiful sentiment. And I am 100% ready. And I tell you this with all of my black heart, okay? I am 100% ready to drop the word African American to just You're an American. American. I, I, and, and I agree with you 100%. Unfortunately, society has not reached that beautiful plateau yet. That's the no. sad part. It is the sad part. It is, it is, it is such a sad part and it, 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 it saddens me. And I think that what's difficult for me, and I'm just going to say 2011 was a very difficult year for me because I live in the suburbs. I'm from Baltimore city. My parents were pretty much raised in Baltimore city. And, and, and this is when you could jump rope in the front yard in Baltimore city. It was great. And Try that my, nowadays. No, yeah, I know. But you know, hey, you, no, hey. That's where I am now. And I, I love Baltimore City. Don't get me wrong. But uh, what I'm saying is that my parents, you know, picked up and moved to the suburbs. And I guess when they raised me and I was raised in an all white school and you ended up with me being one of six black people and you kind of forget it a little bit. It's there, but you kind of forget it. When 2011 hit and you had the Trayvon Martin, things like that. And I remember sitting in my house terrified. And then I got a reminder of it because I went to go and drop off my little boy at someone's house, lovely lady who watched him while I went to work. I went to drop him off and I was followed by the police. And it threw me, it threw my whole sense of, well, that doesn't happen here sense. And I remember thinking to myself, as I finally drove up to this lady's house, how fast can I put my little boy in her arms because she is white and he would be safer there than in mm. mine. So that's what I mean when I say, mm, yeah, we're not ready for that yet. And let me just explain who I am. I am the most, uh, you would not think of me as being threatening in any way. I was driving a mom van for all, for goodness sake. Uh -oh, Why it happened? Mom. Huh? Uh oh, soccer mom. I was a complete soccer mom. Why it happened? I don't know. And I had a doctor's appointment that afternoon and I actually canceled it, drove home and I cried the whole day. And I said, the only thing that could make this right is if I cut the TV on and there was a robbery or something with a blue band and a little black lady. Oh. <laughs> but it, it wasn't true. Right, you helped and justify it, yeah. I, I, I wanted to find any reason I could, I mean, any reason to give some hope to the fact that I was being silly. The lady who I 
I dropped my son off, we waited inside the house literally for 20 minutes before that police officer would leave. Wow. Uh, see, I disagree with the way the, the uh, police officers treat Mexicans, Blacks, Chinese, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, and I hear you. And I'm just and saying I grew up around law enforcement for 28 plus years. And I, I, to this day, I still don't see why they do what they do, but I'm just me. It's I know not how their I was fault raised. either. They are conditioned for it. Sadly. But they shouldn't be. Well, baby- my dad, like I said, my dad grew up in Baltimore City. And let me just explain he's a commander in the Navy, retired. He grew up in Baltimore City. And he used to tell me that sometimes the black cops were worse than the white cops. Oh, yeah. They were worse on their own race. Yeah. Because they, it's what they call pretending they to be white. They wanted to be welcomed. They wanted well, they were to be pre- welcomed. Pretending to be white and prove a point. Go. Go. I'm trying to get my dog out the house. So she'll stop barking. Go. But so, I, um, I think a lot of it has to do with the way people are raised. I, I, I don't know. I just know that as an African-American, the last... 15 years has been really hard. It's I'm been, sorry it has been for you. It shouldn't yeah. have been. And I feel that sediment too, where we were progressing better and better. Yep. And I feel like it's gotten worse. And I, I told this story the other night when I was on live, but you know, my children are biracial and mine too, you know, in having my daughter is very light skin like me. Um, you know, her hair is curly, but it's, it's, people think she's Hispanic possibly, but the 13 year old boy is darker. So, you know, and this is something we've had to, now he's getting older, getting out and about a little more. We've had to have the talk, you know, it's not some mainstream talking point people make up. You really it's, have to have a talk with your it's, And it's the most friends. painful talk in the world. Yes. It is, it is so painful and it, it's, it's painful because you really want to feel like Jeff feels. Why do I have to do this? Yeah. And Jeff, well, a lot of it's because of the way I was raised. I grew up around African-American kids, biracial kids. And the way I was raised is we're equal. It doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. We all bleed red. Yeah. Agreed. And, and, most and I looked at these other kids as like, saying. When I was a kid, I look at these kids like, damn, I'm going to town like that. But that's how I was raised. Most people believe exactly what you're saying. But as far as this abortion issue is going and women feeling, black women, being apathetic is kind of like we're walking around and we're going, okay, well, I'm taking care of mine. Damn. Didn't that sound awful? No. Well, It felt awful. It felt awful, but it is what we are thinking at the moment. Well, that's like I said in here. The only thing I don't agree with is some women do use it for birth control. That's the only time I don't agree with it. And I think it's such a small amount. And you know what I have to say? I personally am am not for abortion, but I'm for pro-choice. That's my personal opinion. And I do believe there's a cutoff. Everybody's entitled to their choice. You know, I mean, and I think that, let me say, my mother, my mother's best friend, who sadly has dementia now, but my mother's best friend was the nicest lady in the world. And I remember being a kid and saying, Mommy, why doesn't Aunt Debbie have any kids? And she wouldn't tell me. Well, she finally did tell me. She had one of those backyard, you know, back alley abortions. Mm. And... She was never able to have children after that. Mm. And that's where we're headed. Yeah. Hey, J3, um, you said you were in a medical background, correct? Yep, I'm a nurse. Okay, so can we maybe talk about, you know, while we're talking about abortion and race, uh, talk about the mortality rate for Black women is higher it's terrifying. And that yeah, it's, is something that's not acceptable and we need to change that, you know. You know, so, this is this is a good topic because um I've talked about this with people before and they frankly don't believe me. Oh really. Sorry. And 
the reason why is because they they assume that we learn cultural differences in nursing school. We don't. We may have a course on it, but it doesn't really go in deep. So this is an example, and I'm sure maybe you can help me with this if I mess up here. So we have patients. When I work in a hospital, I'm a new nurse. I haven't taken care of, of I live in a really wide area. I have very few people of color in my neighborhood. I have not been um, exposed to many people who have different um, body characteristics than I do. So I, I go in, see the patient, and this black woman, and I have to learn how to take care of her hair because I have no freaking idea. Yeah, or find her veins because it's harder to find the vein. That's mm -hmm. right. Yep. And you don't you don't necessarily learn that in a sterile lab setting. And that's kind of representative of the whole entire medical profession. You don't learn about that cultural differences, um, just almost kind of like religious differences. But this is talking about systems like sickle cell anemia. Do I see that very often in my area? No, I really don't. Hey, real quick, if, if, I, if I was a woman... You wouldn't want more of, more of me. I can barely take care of myself. <laughs> that but that's just, that's just <clears throat> an, an example of how we are so deficient in our healthcare system about different, um, different traits people have. And so looking at that and saying, okay, well, the black maternal mortality rate is a lot higher than the white maternal mortality rate. There's lots of reasons for that. Number one is pain control. Yes. People in the, in the healthcare profession, for some reason, and I, I don't quite know the answer because I'm- It goes uh, all the way back to slavery when women were used, uh, black women were used for actual, it was believed that black women had less, black people in general, didn't feel the same amount of pain. Yes. And the experiments that were done. No mm -hmm. offense, baby, but as a fireman, I know better than that. I, I know. I know. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, I, I, J3, I have three children mm -hmm. and I suffer from hyperemesis. Oh, yeah. It is hyperemesis. If you don't understand what it is, take morning sickness and mu multiply it by 20. By four? No, no, no. By you 20. Yeah. By 20. Horrible. Um, horrible. It's horrible. My first pregnancy, I was told it was in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and I lived for the first, I lived on literally mashed potatoes for my full <coughs> pregnancy and I threw up all the time. Baby, um, I was the same way. I lost oh, 12 pounds before I started gaining weight. Girl, I lost 22 pounds. Yeah. I and was, they don't, they don't believe you as a black woman. Is that the point you're trying to, to, to get no, to? No, I think when I, when I, the, I literally at my second pregnancy had a doctor turn to me and say, well, if you don't like it, get an abortion. Wow. Now, I dare her them to have said that to a white woman. Oh. And when my child was born, I made my husband follow my child, not take care of me, because I wanted to make sure that they saw him, my husband is white, and made sure my oh. child got appropriate care. Yeah. My husband goes with me when I go to the doctors because I will get better care if he goes with me. And that's true. Black women are, what is it, three times more likely to die during childbirth than white women? Yep. Because of, and so Jeff, back to your racism point, how you basically, you know, in the beginning, you were kind of saying that it, it didn't really exist as much. Uh, it's racism in all different categories of life. It doesn't just have to be the blatant coming out and saying something to somebody. It's, it's, it's with everything. It's with healthcare. It's with the way that black people are treated on a daily basis. My dad, oh, the truth, I, the truth. I, I understand that, but like I said, right. it shouldn't be that way. But it I, is, and it, it sucks. Is. My dad, the Trumper, um, I never knew my dad to be a racist in my entire life. He was in the Navy. He worked with black people. He worked with Hispanic people. My children are, are half Hispanic. Um, he never said a word to me about my kids being Hispanic or my ex being Hispanic, nothing. And now all of a sudden he's a racist. He thinks black people and Hispanic people should be should be profiled by the police. And My in-laws, the same. Oh, My in-laws, exactly the same. 
we we are actually at the exact same point where my in-laws are trumpers Mm -hmm. and they believe the same thing and my husband's like i can't even associate we will not send my little boy down there to stay with them now in the same way that's that's where we got to work at is getting people's minds off of this racism bullshit well it's because of what they're watching go ahead j3 we also have to accept that structural racism is real we just gave you great examples in the healthcare sector that's Mm -hmm. a structural racism because the people who are taking care of you are not educated and can't provide the adequate care to people who are different than them because it's built in the structure yes and it shouldn't be that's the problem Let me, yeah. let me give you an example. When we bought our first home, I made more than my husband. And we were going to put the house in my name. And we were going to do that. And literally, I had better credit than him. I made more than him. The bank insisted that he be on the loan just for that reason. And it hey, was, girlfriend, that's not a black and white thing. That's a woman man thing. I have the that, same. That is a woman views. man thing. My, but the my, black part didn't help. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, it doesn't. But my my significant other is substantially older than I am. He's almost twenty years older than I am, and people won't even look at me when we're together because they just automatically assume because he's older that I have no opinion. So I I I, I agree with I I know how you feel on that little tiny level. Oh, I, I agree with both of you, and, and unfortunately, there's a lot of states that have laws on the books that says women cannot own property, which is wrong. Yeah. If yeah, I, I look at it this way, if she can afford the property, let her be the owner. I, right. We, we've had to go to great lengths. My husband is leaving for Germany, and he's he before he left, he had to go to great lengths to make sure that I had all of the information given to me because it's harder if some, let's say, God forbid, something happened to him and he was killed for some reason. It's you, harder for a, your hands full. Yeah, it's harder for a black woman to actually get and acquire her her insurance. And and on top of that, there's there's a, there's a one that's really difficult that people don't see. When a black woman files for divorce, she rarely gets any alimony or compensation for that i've seen white women who have gotten three years living in the house i have never once seen a black woman have that same thing happen that that goes both ways because i I know guys that have issues trying to get help and their mentality is well you're a white male you shouldn't have to ask for help yeah no i agree and what i'm saying is is that white white males and black women are placed on both that category. What black women are looked at, well, you can go to work. And see, and that's one of the biggest pet peeves I got with the way society is. It, we're in 2022. We're not in the 1800s. I don't know. We like should have had that back stuff there. cleared up long before now, and it's still not cleared up. And it makes no, absolutely no sense why. 200 years later, we still have the same issue. I think and because, why we're backtracking. Well, part exactly. of the reason is because we kept trying to sweep it under the rug and not deal with it. Sorry, I, I don't know as much as sweeping it underneath the rug. I think it was just, talk. you're not going I, to make I mean, me change my mind. What the dog is saying? Baby, what, what did the dog say? What is the dog's opinion? <laughs> the dog is mad at the ice cream man. He didn't bring her a treat. The dog is mad at the ice cream man. Hey, 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 hey. He didn't don't give her a treat. A Jackson, let me tell I heard you. A they guy don't in listen. A certain capital by an ice cream truck this morning. That was pretty funny. There's the, there's the ice cream man. I, 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 I guess I'll never understand why society is still the way it is after 200 years. Well, Jeff, I, I like your positivity, and I'm glad that that you're not that way, you know, I'm glad that you're giving us hope, you know, and and that's what we need. We need more people advocating in giving hope and giving equal rights and, and keeping that, keeping that out there. And, you know, Um, it's like when I went in the military, I didn't go in the military just for white people or black people or Mexicans. I went in the military for everybody as an equal. My job was protecting the Constitution for everybody, not one race over another. 
Everybody was on the same level. And I still hold those values today. Unfortunately, not everybody does. And that's what's I, you know, I don't. I, I want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I really believe that there are white people who, who are who who feel the same way that you had mentioned before. Like, why can't we just, you know, all be Americans? And I, I really, I really, in in part part of me feels really bad for them because they mean it so much. You Absolutely, know? baby. Um, you know, it's. What's really disheartening to me is I've seen several videos lately on YouTube of, of black women in particular and how much they hate us. And it's disheartening for me because I, I love everybody in general, in a general sense. Um, you know, of course, there's people that are going to piss me off. But, um, you know, I know there's race. I get it, it exists, but it doesn't really matter. I could give a fuck less. And so when I see this, I, I can see the hate in their eyes and I hate it for them and I hate it for for anybody else. And I will say that since Trump's Trump was in office, I've had black people that have been absolutely rude to me. And but, you know, what am I going to do? I, just kind of just I, let it roll off my back. It doesn't bother me in a sense in the in a way it probably would bother you as a black woman if a white person was being rude to you because of your. No, race. of course it's going to bother you. I mean, and. Yeah. and and I have to say, oh my God, dog. I have to say that I totally have seen what you're saying. And it, I think there's just this uh, feeling of, oh my God, I'm so tired. Uh, right. It, it does wear you down. It really does when you think about it. Because a lot of things that happen what, is what how you, you lead your life. From here? Like what, what is the, the best course of action other than general advocacy like i don't know what what do you even try to do on a local level i, 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 I like, don't i don't know i don't I like jeff is not uh, being adversarial and is kind of speaking a little bit of a little bit of facts in terms of the general uh you know uh, opinion held by yeah i don't have an answer i don't think the only, the only I, answer i can think of and a lot of people might not agree with it is you take people from every walk of life, whether they're Chinese, Mexican, Japanese, African American, Indian, Native American, whatever, and you sit them down and you come up with the simple solution to get everybody on the same track. Instead of running a million different tracks, we all need to be on one track together. As humans, and that's what we are. We're all humans. I agree. I just don't know how it would be done. I don't think it can ever be done. And that's the biggest problem. Well, we can't give up. We got to keep fighting, you know, and, you know, and they say racism. Racism is a, a white problem. Because it's, in general, the white people who've been racist throughout America's history and world history. World but history. It's not just a white and, problem. And we have a part to stick up and use our voices. You know, I'm pretty shy in real life, or pretty shy in here too, but, you know, having that voice to stand up, you know, for ourselves and for others and I, I don't know I, I think this is a great group right here I mean I think we've solved all the problems of the world <laughs> in this group and I just <laughs> it. we've been on this panel for a while and you know what we haven't had to watch Oreo stream at all we have been in our own happy place of love and peace girl I have not been able to watch him today him and Wizzy uh -uh, I, no. can't. But I that, can't I've been watching that's people not, that's tweet not about it work. You know, it's not doing the work to have a good faith dialogue. Uh, I don't, we, did, we, I, we made I a mistake. Drama. I, don't, I, don't, I don't crave argument or drama, but that, you know, it's not doing the work to try to have a good faith discussion and, and dialogue. Right? I, I can see now everybody was going to be saying this panel, th that panel was rigged. There's no way they were not open minded with each other. That's impossible. Right. They would just call it fake. 
Well, I yeah. think right now my problem, and I'm just going to say it, my problem is this whole left-right thing. I just, I'm so over it. And I'm going to say, I am, I am not left-right. I, I would call myself quite purple. And, and Same I'm just, polka dots. Yeah, po- per, you know, like, seriously. And I would call myself that because I am, you know, conservative in the manner of financially. But everything else, I'm liberal. So, but, and it, it, it's frustrating. And what frustrates me the most is when I hear Wizzy say, the left, the left, the left. I just want to reach to the screen and choke him. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I feel your concern because I'm tired of hearing the left side, the right side, Trump this, Biden that. I, I'm tired of hearing it all. Yeah. Right. Well, there's diff- Americans are responsible for what's going on. We're all guilty of it because we put who's in office in office. Yeah. We're to blame. The person we need to be looking at is ourselves in the mirrors because we're to blame. We really are. But let's be honest. We never put the right person in office. We have to accept that, that there's never going to be the best We did once person. and it got him killed. I don't know. Maybe if he had lived longer, he wouldn't have been great. Right. Yeah, we didn't really get a chance to find out. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I agree with you. You know, I think Kennedy could have done a lot of great things. I think Bobby he could was have done doing it. a lot of great things. And I, and do. I was hoping Bobby would run, but he was threatened. He was I, scared out of running. Well, he ended up dying anyhow. But yeah, but he was threatened. If he ran, he was going to be the next one killed. And, and and I think that the, the difficult thing is that, you know, we're not going to have the perfect candidate and we have to accept that. We did once and since then we've, excuse my French ladies, fucked it up ever since. Oh, God, yes. And you know what candidate I think back and people thought was the worst president and now I look back and go, maybe he wasn't that bad? Carter. Termite, learn your history. Kenny did not get assassinated in California. He got assassinated in Texas. Termite doesn't know what he's talking about. He's been arguing That's obvious. for a while. So, Wait, That's obvious. Where, where's termite I'm stuff? I don't know I'm what I'm looking at. He's, he's just been yeah, saying that. He he's just gotcha. running them out. He, he's clueless. Well, he also said you can't appeal a Supreme Court decision. You can all day long. It doesn't mean that they're going to allow you to. Well, to actually, you can. It, but, but it's got to go through the Senate and the House. And right, the problem with that is it's doable. then it goes to the president and the president's got one or two options. He can either say yes or mm-hmm. he can veto it and the battle is over with. Mm-hmm. Because once it's vetoed, you can never try going at it again. Right. That oh, is the okay. only way you can overturn the Supreme Court. Termite was talking about Bobby's assassination, not JF or not uh, John so. Uh, Gabby I guess asked in the chat, have we essentially been kicked out of this? <laughs> no, I mean, I think you got to... I just want to hear your view more, Phil. I feel like you've been well, really quiet. The, the solution is at the bottom of the bottle. And, uh, you know, Team Burn, all the way Bernie, you know, Biden sucks. So. Uh, uh, well, I, <laughs> I agreed with Bernie Sanders, but then again... I was listening to some of his speeches, and he basically did himself in with some of his speeches. He scared the crap out of a lot of people. All those civil rights things, you know. Like- Do you think it was the universal health care that scared people? <laughs> no, I, 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 I think it was some of his other ideas that he was wanting to do. I think that if, like, I followed Bernie Sanders for a long time, and I really, really liked him as a person. I did not like him as a presidential candidate because I don't feel that he would have been effective at all. He actually yeah. would have galvanized the right, I think. I him. agree with you, baby. I he agree. Didn't strong enough personality. Sorry, well, Joy. Go ahead. I keep cutting you off. Go ahead, Joy. Oh, no. I was saying I agree with baby that, yeah, I like Bernie, but okay, maybe this is just me. <laughs> Say it. I kind of want my president to be strong. even sealed. You know, and Bernie sometimes goes off, you know, a little too much. I don't know. Maybe I just want the president to be a little calmer, you know, but that's my preference. Some people like the theatrics, you know, we're all different. J3, what, what is your kind of opinion on the different candidates? Like kind of where, what do you look for? Um, 
you know, this this time was a little bit different, and I think it was that way for a lot of Democrats and, frankly, some Republicans, too. It was a, we have to get Trump out of the White House, and we have to find the person that we can all agree to vote for. Yes. So it couldn't be too far left, because, honestly, my candidate was was on the left side for this this particular race. Um, so I think we all just finally said, who can we g- agree with is going to be the person for this time? And I really do think we made the best choice. I have we to say, I, I have followed Biden all of my life and I'm pretty, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I like Biden, you know, yeah. I think that I like Biden. He doesn't always agree. I don't always agree with him. And I think that he's too damn, you know, uh, what's the word? congenial with people pussy-footed pussy-footed thank you that's a beautiful <laughs> word for it and and i think that he is but as someone as our president we do have to kind of look at him as the president and i feel he fits that role absolutely yeah. I, feel the same way. I, I think yeah. he said a lot, i think he has said a couple of things in his past that were less than you know um they just weren't wise things to say especially sure. in public um oh. But he just, he just, he versus, let's just take Trump since he was the last president. His yeah. compassion level is, they just don't compare. Um, you know, Biden has been through a lot of heartache in his life. And I think that that, that has, uh, you know, come to play in, in, in the state of our society right now. I think Trump has zero compassion. So it's at yeah, least we for had me, a- We've had a million people die from COVID. A million people here. That's a yeah. huge number. We still haven't really dealt with that fact. We really haven't. That's no. horrible. Well, to Trump, it is what it is, right? Yeah. Well, it'll be gone by Easter. Yeah. No, it won't. <laughs> well, I, I can agree with the general sentiment that, you know, if yeah, a utilitarian approach. If Biden was going to be the most likely to actually beat Trump, great. Uh, I, I appreciate the idealism of, of a Bernie Sanders, and that would have definitely yeah. been my pick. So that's all I can really say about that. But Termite Man, he's got the answers. Does he want to get up? I mean, am I blocking? Uh, yeah, let's get on We've been, tra- we've been trying go. to get him in there. He won't do it. All right. Ben, uh, I can't see the I chat. Gotta, I can only see you guys. Oh, I, that, it's over on YouTube. Be. So, you know, I'll be back if popular demand requires. Yeah. So, Phil, my my thing with Bernie is, is I I think I think marijuana should be legalized federally. I think a lot of people would chill out. Oh, he's gone. But he's I do. still here. Oh, OK. I think a lot of people would chill out if they were able to smoke freely. Um, I'm a big proponent of marijuana. I think it is a I have Crohn's disease, so. Um, for me, it's been a life changer as far as that's concerned. Um, I was 88 pounds when I was diagnosed and was extremely ill and have just flourished as far as life's concerned. I'm able to do everything that I want to do. And it is a miracle drug, in my opinion. So well, uh, for, that, for that reason alone, I thought he would have been a great president. Oh, this is probably going to blow your mind, Gia, because you think you, you know me so well, but yeah, I don't think the government should have ever le- illegalized marijuana to begin with because it's Thank a natural you. plant. Agreed. Yeah. It, uh, it's it's no it. different than onions, lettuce, tomatoes, cabbage, asparagus. It's a natural plant. You, right. You're not, you're, I good. completely agree. Uh, I, I agree with illegalized to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tell my kids no pills, no powders, no needles. Marijuana, as soon as, you know, they don't know anything about me, but as soon as you're of a, a certain age and that's something that you want to experiment, I'm, I would be far more willing to talk to you about that than drinking. Uh-huh. I think alcohol can be a detrimental drug because it is a drug. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the state of our country, too. Everybody's just so into partying and getting just drunk. And-